Well, I think I'm going to disappoint you because in many ways it looks the same. Um, because what worked 30 years ago still works today. And, and that's because impairments caused by leprosy are mainly as a result of nerve damage. So the basics of self-care principles, taking care of skin, taking care to maintain the, the range of movements in joints and preventing contractures and preventing blindness, that all still applies as much in 2022 as it did 30 plus years ago. But I suppose the main difference that we have now is that we have technology that enables us to detect nerve damage much earlier. So for example, in a number of our centers in India, we have physiotherapists who can conduct nerve, uh, nerve conduction tests. So we're able to identify small changes in nerve function much, much earlier and therefore we can start the necessary treatment uh, that we need to put in place. Um, also, in the last 20 and 30 to 30 years, we've got a lot of advances in orthotics and we've been able to take um, advantage of the improved orthotics and related uh, um, facilities and interventions and tools from diabetes and from other diseases that cause peripheral neuropathy we've been able to adopt those and adapt those for leprosy so so that's a change um, and another difference that we've seen is is with our advocacy work and with our training of, of general health workers and just generally raising awareness about leprosy related disability we've been able to integrate leprosy disability services into general disability services. Um, so we don't always need to, we, we used to have to set up separate, for example, separate artificial limb workshops for people affected by leprosy. Now we're able to refer them to general limb making services. Uh, another difference, it was starting 20 to 30 years ago, but another difference is, is the the peer to peer to support so so initiatives like self care groups where we have enough people to bring together um, to support one another um, we can have self care self care groups where people affected by leprosy and actually other neglected tropical diseases can support one another to take care of their eyes hands and feet um, and then some of those have grown into self-help groups, which goes uh, into other um, non-physical non rehabilitation things as well. And I think the other big thing that's happened really very recently, so I would say probably in the last five years in a major way, is that we've recognised that the, the, the effects of leprosy are not only physical, but they're also mental. So, so persons with disability, persons with, uh, affected by leprosy who have mental health issues, who have anxiety, who have depression, we are more aware of that now. We have our, our staff and our partners have been trained to identify, to identify it and we're training people to do some basic psychological first aid. Again, we're also training people affected by leprosy to be peer counsellors to support one another as, as well.